Hello fam, welcome back to the African Diaspora News Channel. I am Ongil Zelalem and today we're talking about the world's longest serving president, Teodoro Obiang. He is the president of Equatorial Guinea. We've talked about his son a lot because he's the vice president and he's known as the playboy vice president because he buys mansions all over the world, yachts, he has a memorabilia of Michael Jackson's gloves. He just spends a lot of money and he's the vice president of an oil rich country, which is Equatorial Guinea with a population of just 1.4 million people. And majority of the people live under the poverty line. Unfortunately, this president has been in that position for 43 years, but was not able to change his people's circumstance, even though they are oil rich. It's, it's really sad. But anyways, let me just show you a little bit of um, his son's way of life, because we talked about it before. We'll come back and discuss. Opiang collection of luxury assets and properties in France includes a 25 million mansion. He also owns 18 luxury cars, artwork, jewelry, and designer fashion. From the luxury cars, among them are Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Bentleys, and Rolls Royce. He also bought a Michael Jackson memorabilia, like a, um, a glove of Michael Jackson was auctioned and he bought it. Um, what else? He has his own private jet, not presidential, private jet. He has a humongous boat, estimated around 100 million euros. Let's just say this guy's bowling with the money of the Equatorial Guinea. So they're saying that he won with 95% votes. 95, just imagine that. The same president that was in that position for 43 years, actually the world's longest serving president in the whole entire world, he's the longest. And with that small population for him to not be able to change their circumstance, even though they're supposed to be a rich country because of their oil, it's just mind boggling. And honestly, I don't understand it. Even if you try, like you have to, I feel like, and this is my opinion, you have to work really hard not to develop that country for that country to be where it is right now. Like work hard against it, not necessarily work as the president to improve it, but like you have to work against it for it not to succeed because how are you that rich when it comes to the natural resources that God has given you? And in the same sentence, we're going to say that the people are not well off. They are struggling. How is this even possible? Honestly, I don't know if 95% of votes went for him or maybe the people are scared because um, there are lots of reports of human rights violations. There's reports that he suppresses um, opposition leaders, parties. So there's not really a lot of competition against him because if you speak against him, something will happen to you. Don't, don't, don't. You fill in that blank. Um, but it's just honestly really sad to see Equatorial Guinea in that position when they could be one of the richest country in the world. Very sad. And he is saying that this term, his priority, it, I could not even believe this. He said when he was asked what he wants to do, he said he wants to clean up his reputation internationally because his name has been, you know, dragged through the mud for the things he's done. So he's saying that's what he wants to do. He wants to change the minds um, of people that think that, you know, he's not the best leader. Honestly, as a person that just got elected, that's one of your priorities, changing people's minds. I would suggest he works towards changing his people's lives because he is in that position to serve them. Anyways, fam, let us know down below what your thoughts are about this story. I am Ongil Zalalem. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.